know. Welcome everybody to Unity Church of Ames today on this last Sunday of the month of November, the month of our talks on power of release. I am Steve Newell, the uh, Secretary of the Board and uh, one of the chaplains and uh, the platform assistant today on this very beautiful Scandinavian-esque kind of a <laughs> Sunday morning. It's not a dark and cloudy morning. There's, there's, there's some residual sunlight coming through the, the Arctic cloud mist. And uh, you know, it's very Scandinavian-esque day today. So watch out for gingerbread houses. That's my, that's the, don't go in. Don't, just don't go in. It looks good, but no, don't, don't do that. All right. So let's get on now then to a few things here. Looks like I'm going to be the chaplain today. Uh, chaplain available to pray with you during the time from 11.30 to 11.50 a.m. over in the prayer room over there. Uh, and then um, uh, we have Paula Anderson today on piano. Uh, again, thank you so much, Paula, for being here. And, uh, and so... of Advent is hope, um, but the reading today is faith, meditation on faith. Like Mary and Joseph, I may sometimes find that outer circumstances are not to my liking. There is no room at the inn, they were told, but they journeyed on undaunted. When I face a challenge or an obstacle in my life, I too carry on. Faith fuels my courage and commitment. As I turn to the guidance of God within, my way is made clear. I release all worries and concerns. My burden is made light. I have all the faith I need to fulfill my destiny. I step forward in confidence and give thanks for the unfolding of my highest good. And from Hebrews 11.1, 1, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. So we light this very first candle for hope and faith. It takes both. Amen. Okay. So now, uh, shall we uh, commence with uh, our opening prayer together? Please uh, get yourself situated in your uh, seating position comfortably uh, and uh, just kind of let all the stress. Go away, feet squarely on the ground, take a deep breath in and out once, just kind of, just kind of let, let the stress and the worry go away. These words from the uh, book Prayer with, Pray Without Ceasing, uh, which is available in the Unity Bookstore. The love of God lies within. Let us harmonize in concert. Peace, be still. Be open to receive in the silence. Wait patiently until it is revealed. The still, small voice whispers softly, Gentle guidance comes through as a light, an idea, a swell in the heart, a profound truth is revealed. Give thanks. Take a breath, long and deep. 
Revel in answered prayer. Source, we give thanks for the indwelling presence that you provide. You are the center. The indwelling presence, the divine spark. From the beginning, now, and evermore, you are that one presence, equidistant from anywhere, from anyone, from any place, yet you are present. Your love unfailing. Thank you for the inspiration of divine love. May we ever more express from that inspiration. And in this we give thanks. Thanks to Jesus, the way shower, and thanks to Almighty God. Amen, and so it is. Amen, and so we let it be. All right, and now we got that over with. Let's get on to. Thank you. You may be seated, please. And uh, now we uh, have in our tradition of affirmations uh, this affirmation, which we hold in prayerful intention throughout the Unity World in all of our centers, temples, and churches. And it is the Unity Worldwide Ministries Foundation statement. Uh, please join with me in saying this together. There is one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God the good, omnipotent. Thank you. And in like fashion, we have our own Unity Church of Ames affirmation. Shall we say that together, please? Through the Christ Spirit in us, we create a better church and a better world. So be it. All right, thank you. Thank you, please be seated. All right, and now we have the daily word with Mon Chari. <laughs> Sherry, Brad. Yeah, you're the only one that gets away. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. The word for today is faith. With faith, I first believe, then I see. Some say seeing is believing, but my spiritual self first believes, then sees. Faith does not require that I know all the steps to take before I begin my journey. I pray with faith, then open my mind and heart to guidance. When children write letters to Santa Claus, they hope their wishes will come true. My belief is greater even than that of a child. With grown-up faith, I turn within and listen. The answers I receive may be chance encounters, unexpected opportunities, or exciting new ideas. My faith is confirmed every day. I follow through on my guidance. As I am led, I act. I put feet under my prayers. First I believe, then I see. The scripture comes from Mark, chapter 10, verse 52. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. Today's word is faith. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Sherry. Okay, so now... Thank you. Please be seated. And now it's time for the lesson with Rev. Dad. <coughs> okay, am I on? Yes, I think so. Well, I'm up here anyway. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Did we all get enough turkey and cranberries and <laughs> yes, uh, stuffing and all of that family time? We all got enough of all of it. Okay, good. Here we are. Very good. Yes, letting go of holding on. 
tell you. When you go back to visit your family of origin, you can sure figure out some things you still want to let go of. It's such an interesting experience. It's interesting to be able to look at that and now with perspective and from that place of love, have that sense of letting go and really letting go with love. That's, that's been an interesting part of this journey. Very grateful to be on this journey with all of you. Forgot to tell you all, next Sunday will also be New Member Sunday. So if anyone has been coming and gone to classes and all of those good things, please let me know by today. Because we will be accepting our very own Mr. and Mrs. Claus. <laughs> Not everybody gets to do that on the first Sunday of December. I think that's pretty cool. All right. So the traditional um, word for the first Sunday of Advent in the Christian tradition is hope. And the traditional Christian message has been we're seeking hope in the birth of Jesus as our Savior. That's the traditional story, but the unity story is a little bit different. And so faith has shown up in the literature, the unity book, as the first Sunday of Advent. I think that's really kind of cool, and I think it fits. We have been journeying this whole year with the 12 powers, and if you remember back in January, when it was cold and snowy, we began with the power of faith. So here we are journeying through all 11 powers to the power of letting go, and on this last Sunday of release and letting go, we do it with faith. And I think that's just terrific. It all kind of comes full circle, doesn't it? Just like life. Because, as I have been practicing this month, letting go, really becoming aware of the grudges I've held and all the clutter and cleaning up and letting go, I realized that underneath it all is a great faith. I let go of what I no longer need, whether it's physical stuff or my treasured beliefs, trusting that if I need it sometime in the future, it will be there. If you're a teacher, an educator, you're just chronic of letting go because you just might need this sometime in the future. But it requires great faith to just let it go and know that whatever we need will be provided, right? We will have what we need. That's the faith that sustains this ability to let go. And it's the great flow of the universe. It's the giving and receiving flow of the universe. It's also a tremendous freedom. Because when we let go of what we no longer need, whether it's an opinion, whether it's an attitude, whether it's a belief, we are open to the allness of God. Not knowing exactly what the universe will ask of us in this emptied out state. And it's important that we affirm as we empty ourselves of statements of self-criticism and self-doubt. We empty ourselves of resentments and self-judgments, self-condemnation, harsh words. We empty ourselves. We let go of habits of seeing our limitations and the limitations of others as a bad thing. It's important then to invite the Spirit of God, the whole Spirit of God, to fill us up with something better, something new, something that gives life. Otherwise, we just develop cross addictions, right? I give up one and I just take on another. I stop being snarky and judgmental, but then I'd be rude. You know, I don't know. I think I can get very creative about those kinds of things. Because we will never take the plunge into a new way of being unless we're willing to let go of our attachments to our old way of being. It happens daily in really small steps, which over time have a big impact on us. It happens daily. It happened for me at Thanksgiving dinner, or day after, because, you know, I just really have a thing with 
smart aleck adolescents. <laughs> and I have a smart aleck adolescent nephew <laughs> who managed to push my buttons, not meaning to, but just being his snarky adolescent self. And it was really interesting to observe. You know, you expect to be triggered by your parents or your siblings, but my nephew, <laughs> there he was. And I thought, oh, okay, let go. Took me a while. Took me a while. But this process of release, letting go of my judgment of him, by the time I got home last night, it was like, wow, I could step back and say, do you really want to be in that energy of judging him and just, you know, showing him how life really is, et cetera, et cetera. You know, all those things that the grown-ups in your life said that you didn't like or listen to? I don't think so. Took me a while to let go of it. It really was the ministry of breathe in, breathe out. Did you all practice that? Or... <clears throat> breathe in, breathe out. And as I wrestled with the talk this past week, you know, Tuesday, I was writing the talk, and I did everything but write the talk. Play on Facebook, send cards, send a letter, look at, right, anything. I just wasn't in it. And it, it was just wrestling with me. And I realized how attached I get, how quickly I get attached to how I think it should happen, how I think things should be, right? I really attach to that very quickly, and I need to step back, and back again, and let go, and let God. Because God sees a whole picture that I don't. I have to step back and allow my greater good to come to me. I have to step back and say, all right, what kind of relationship do I want to have with my nephew? And how do I cultivate that? How do I allow spirit to bring the right energy to me to cultivate that? I get so attached to how, what good is. You know, what does good mean to you? We all can think of a reference, right, or a definition, or how it should look. This church full of people, I get attached to how unity should be. More attention for unity and aims. More influence with power people, okay? I went and stood at the Capitol building last Monday, and it's like, okay, um, did they hear me? Did they quote me on NPR or Iowa Public Radio? I got so attached, right? And then there was my picture, because I didn't think anything happened. I didn't have a clue what happened. And it's like, let it go. You went and said something, you said your piece, step back and let the greater good unfold in the way that God sees how it should unfold. Whew. <coughs> it is a constant process, a constant process. And the ministry of breathe in, breathe out. Do that with me right now. Breathe in, hold it, let it go. Do it one more time. Let's breathe in, let it go. Whatever we're attached to, let it go. That's what this release is all about. Because whatever we let go of, what is true here is that the energy that we breathe in and we breathe out has to go somewhere. We breathe in oxygen, right? And we breathe out carbon dioxide. We keep doing that. And right now the Earth has a little too much of that creating a problem, right, for the atmosphere, warming us up, just a little too much of that hot air we all breathe out. So what is needed, as I was driving home from the Capitol last Monday, and what, that there was a story on NPR that said, what we need to do is plant trees. We need more plants, we need more trees, we need to reforest and actually add more forest cover so that it absorbs all of this CO2. We need to um, increase those things in the environment that need this energy. And scientists are investigating ways to bury it, right? To be rid of it or reduce it to, until it's reduced to more manageable levels. Well, I think that's a pretty instructive model for us in this releasing, forgiving, and letting go. 
Because when we breathe out our habits of being judgmental, we can send that energy to those who need the power of wisdom. When we breathe out the energy of self-criticism and condemnation, we can just breathe it out and let spirit take it and send the energy to those who need the energy of the power of will. When we breathe out the energy of fear and worry and lack, we can let it go and let spirit take it and give it to those who need the energy of the power of order. When we breathe out the energy of lack and any habits of hoarding and holding on, we can send it out to anyone who needs the energy of the power of faith. So that as we let go of those things that limit us, we can invite the universe to take it and send that energy to those who need it. Anyone, when we breathe, breathe out the energy of resentment or hate, the energy of resentment, anger, and we transmute it and send it to anyone who needs the power of love. Send them that energy in the form of love. Last time we talked about forgiveness as giving for, what will you give for? I think that's what this is. I think we take whatever that energy is we're ready to let go of and we give for. We give it forth and let God transform it and give it to whoever needs it in whatever form they need it. That's what happens. And when we do that, we're letting go and we're letting into the great unknown, into life, into something that will give life. We're letting go into that unformed manifestation of our good. We don't know what it is yet. We don't know. We have no idea what form it will take. And it isn't easy to let go. Just watch the cyclones let go of their football coach, right? It's not easy, this letting go. Watch yourself let go of a desire for anger or retribution or to set someone straight. It's not easy. Sometimes it comes with tears. Sometimes it comes with holy water. That's what our tears are, right? And they bless the process. Let it go. How much more destructive it is, is it to hold on to something way past the time that you needed to really let it go? Right? How destructive is that? So, we, somebody else needs that energy. Let it go. Let it go. Our balloons came out. Did you notice? They and we weren't even here to see it. Right? They let go. They're in my trash can now, right? And that energy will go into something else. So we let go, and it really takes a great faith to trust in spirit, because we don't know how it will turn out. We have no idea. But that really is what we're asked to do in this power, this spiritual process of release. We let go into the via creativa, the way of creativity. And it leads to more of God being realized in you and in me, through you and through me. This whole Christmas time is a perfect time to be talking about this letting go process. Because this is Advent. And we are going to have those, we have an Advent thing up there, don't we? I think it's not there yet, but we have one that has all the Advent banners. And there's a story, and the story begins with a young woman. The young woman is Mary, and she is visited by an angel to tell her she is going to need to let go of her life as she ever knew it, because it isn't going to be like the line she thinks she's in. She's betrothed to Joseph, and she's going to get married like a good Jewish girl to a good Jewish boy. But I tell you what, she ain't in the same line that all of her peers are. It's going to be a whole different deal. She's going to let go of how life really is into a life how it really is. And this is a story. It's not necessarily on-the-scene reporting. 
It's a metaphysical story. And even if we know that it's not true in the eyewitness account sense of this, we know that it contains truth with a capital T. So here's how it goes. It's in Luke. Luke 1, verse 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin, engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he said to her, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered, What sort of greeting is this? Right? Who are you and what are you talking about? And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Really? I thought I was just going to get married. Right? Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I'm a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son and is in her sixth month. This is for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And then Mary said, Here I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And then the angel departed from her. That's a powerful, powerful image, isn't it? A young girl betrothed, having to let go, being told what to name the child, and that this child will be holy. How in the world could she understand any of that? How could she make any sense out of it? And yet she's a powerful demonstration to us of letting go and just allowing. And what is she allowing? Metaphysically, the Christ life to be brought forth through her, to be born in her. That's our invitation in this Advent season, to let go of the line we think we're in, right? And allow that presence of the Christ to really be born in us. She's told she's a virgin, but she's going to be pregnant the time she gets married. That's a huge no-no. That's huge. And yet, she says yes. She says yes. And then she's given all this information about what it means to let go into life. It is holy. The word holy just means whole. Right? We have the masculine and feminine energy of this picture. It makes you whole. It's the whole of you. Metaphysically, we have the number six. The number six is like a, a, an image of the Star of David. Two triangles in perfect balance, right? It is about that perfect balance of our Christ energy and our human energy coming together. And in that Christ is this perfect example of that wholeness and of that div divinity and humanity embodied in Jesus and embodied in Mary. They're incredibly powerful examples. Letting go of all doubt and concern and just saying yes to whatever life brings. Metaphysically, angels are divine ideas. And the divine idea showed up to her and she said yes. Now just before this, in the story, Zechariah has also encountered an angel. He is the husband of Elizabeth. Zechariah, the first words out of his mouth when the angel said to him, Zechariah, you are going to have a son. He said, how in the world can that be? Right? 
isn't that our thinking nature that usually gets engaged? And you know what happened to him? He was struck dumb until the kid was born. There's a message for us, right? We hear this message and we open and let go and we don't know. So to stay in that open and receptive space, that's our journey in this letting go into life, into our next power, to seeing what it brings forward and brings forth in us. That's the power of this power, the process of letting go. Sometimes, like Zechariah, we clearly need to let go of our inclination to overthink things and just allow it to be. Just allow it to be. This ministry of breathing in and breathing out is just something to continually mindfully practice as we allow spirit to bring forth in us life. Whatever form that's supposed to take, it's life, just like Mary. It takes great faith, great humility, great courage to say yes and not have any idea how it's going to turn out, but give ourselves over to walking that path no matter what. That's the invitation. That's the invitation. We begin Advent with a great deal of faith and willingness to say yes, letting go of all doubt. So let's take that now into meditation. We're going to sing holy, holy, holy. Because that's an affirmation of the whole of us. The whole of our humanity and the whole of our divinity. We are holy, holy, holy. Let us 
sit for a moment in that silence of saying yes. I say, yes, Lord, allow my higher self to fill me, to guide me, to show me the way. Whatever is asked of me, I say, yes. And I invite that whole Spirit of God, and I wait upon the Lord for that answer. What is mine to do in this season? Christmas season, how is it I let go into life? What is it I am called to do? So we finish singing again, affirming for ourselves, I am holy. I am holy. I am holy, holy, holy. I am holy, holy, holy. I am holy, holy, holy. I am We pray all of these things in the name and through the nature of Jesus, our way shower. Amen. Amen. Let us close with our prayer for protection.
The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God washes over us wherever we are.